So in this video, I want to talk you through the steps it took for me to be able to program a uh, PIC32 MX250 processor using the PIC Kit 3. Uh, it's the DIP28 package, uh, and it's kind of interesting to get it up and running. And this should apply to the PIC uh, MX, it's like the 170, the 270 or something. Like that. Anyhow, there's several of, of these uh, chips in the DIP28 package, and this programming solution should work with all those DIP28 parts. So the first thing I really needed to make this work was uh, programming software that actually worked with it. I've got you know the, the default Pit Kit 3 programmer software here. I could never make this actually work, even though I could get it into modes where it knew what a Pit 32 was. I've also got the uh, Pit Kit 3 Plus software, which looks very similar. This is, I think, coming out of a development group in Germany that's extended it again for PIC32 support. But again, I could never make this work to actually program a device. It would continually uh, basically say, you know, no device detected, a check capacitor on, you know, blah, blah, blah. It just could never read the device ID. So my solution became this. Up on the microchip website, we want to go to uh, design support, actually. Development Tools, Embedded Software Center, and we want to look at the MP Lab X IDE. And if we click the link here, there's all kinds of information. But the bit you need to know, scroll down far enough, you'll find where you can download the installer package. So I downloaded this and installed it. And in installed with this is the uh, MP Lab X IPE, Integrated Programming Environment. And that's the tool we're going to use to actually make things work here. We'll take a quick peek at our setup. This is a little schematic I put together of how things are wired up. I've got the PIC Kit 3 programmer. It's got six pins, five of which are used. It's got a pin that controls the memory clear pin on the PIC. That requires a 10K ohm pull-up resistor to the, the power rail here. The PIC Kit 3 can supply the 3.3 volts power the PIC needs. And I'll show you how to do that. So the, the PIC Kit's going to provide here on the, on the uh, red line the 3.3 volt power. That needs to go to pin 13 on the PIC. It needs to go to pin 23 on the PIC. And it needs to go to pin 28 on the PIC. You also pick up ground from the PIC Kit 3, the black line here. And that gets connected here to pin 8. Loops around to pin 19 and to pin 27. You're going to want to add a 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap here. Across these two pins, as I've got it drawn here, you're going to want another 0.1 microfarad decoupling cap over here for pin 13. And then pin 4 and 5 here become the data and clock pins where the data is sent back and forth between the PIC and the PIC Kit 3 for programming. And it's just really pin 4 on the PIC Kit 3 to pin 4 on the package and pin 5 to pin 5. We can look at how I put this together on a little proto board here. We've got the header that goes off to the PIC Kit 3. Pin 1 is over here. Pin 1 becomes this white wire where uh, M clear goes to pin 1 on the PIC and comes to this 10K ohm pull up resistor. We've got pin 2, which comes off and powers this bottom row of pins here where the red stripe is. It comes up through the red wire here and to this bottom row of pins again where the red stripe is. Pin 3 comes down and brings ground down to all these pins on the inside here. It comes up across and all the pins on the outside here. So if we follow the power around, we'll see that power comes along to the pin here it needs to go to. It brought, it's brought around and it comes in through the uh, a wire here and the wire here. Ground does the same thing. We get our ground connection, transfers up, and we get the two ground connections that come through again to the processor. This is a, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic disc that's used for decoupling here on these power pins. There's another ceramic disc down here that becomes decoupling for here. Really, I should have plugged that capacitor in here, but it, in this case, it doesn't matter. There's this 10 microfarad tantalum, and the capacitor here is important. Uh, while we're sending 3.3 volts onto the board here to power the device, the internal core of the PIC processor runs at 1.8 volts. There's an internal power supply built into the chip to power that core. This becomes the, the bulk storage capacitor for that. And what happens is, is the ground is of course referenced here, and the negative lead of the tantalum ca cap's plugged in here. And then the positive lead of the cap comes to here. 
And like I said, the internal uh, voltage regulator in the chip produces the 1.8 volts uh, and uses this as bulk decoupling. You'll notice there's no connection here from the, you know, this pin to any place. I kind of brought these two photos here together to kind of compare what we've got side by side. And just like I said, pin one follows the white wire to one into the 10K pull-up resistor. We see this here. Pin two brings power in, which is distributed around to the proper pins. Pin three brings around ground. Same thing, the green wires here for grounding things. This little decoupling cap is this guy right here. This decoupling cap is this guy right here. This 10 microfarad tantalum is this guy up here. Really any tantalum should work, but their data sheet calls for one with what's called a, a less than 3 ohm ESR. See, so any tantalum should work in here. You should be fine. And then we have the data and clock pins here from pin 4. So we can see the pin 4 comes to pin 4 on the device. Or actually, that was pin 5 comes to pin 5 on the device. And pin 4 comes to pin 4 on the device. So that's really how we go from the schematic to the wiring on the protoboard. In the video, I'm going to mention we have to hold down the black button on the PIT Kit 3 when we power it up. So hold down the button, plug in the USB power, release the button. That puts the PIT Kit 3 in what's called MP Lab mode. Uh, by default, your PIT Kit 3 will probably have the PIT Kit 3 operating system on it. This is how you override that. It's important that you get it in MP Lab mode for the MP Lab IPE software to work. And finally, there's just a view here of how I've got everything hooked up. Uh, Pin 1 here is the orange wire coming out of the PIC. Uh, kit 3, it comes around to pin 1 here on the programming header. Uh, and you want, and generates that uh, mclear signal and then power, etc. come around. So that's really how I'm wired up. So with all that said, I'm going to pick up my PIC Kit 3 here. I'm going to hold down the black button and I'm going to plug in the uh, USB cable as soon as I find it here. And I'm going to release the button, and that should wake the PIT Kit 3 up in the MP uh, lab mode. So let's go ahead and start up the IPE software. This always sizes funny. It doesn't seem to hold the, the size settings. And what it's told us here is I've gone ahead and uh, pre-picked the PIC32 MX250 processor I want to program. There's a number, you know, a ton of processors here you could pick from. But I've picked the one that I want to program. That's important here to do. And it's looked at it on the USB devices and said, hey, I found a programmer. And that is, the, you know, the programmer I have plugged in that started up in the uh, MP lab mode. Let's go ahead and connect to that programmer. And it says, hey, I see the programmer, but I need to put new software onto the programmer. So right now it's flashing uh, different firmware onto the PIC programmer. And this firmware is specific for the PIC32 MX250 processor. So it's important you pick that processor first, do your connect, and let it download the proper firmware it needs to to be able to you know, deal with that device. And this takes a few seconds here, so we'll just let it run. You can see here it still thinks it's doing something. And it's downloading software and flashing it into the PIC Kit 3 itself. And it's done and it's, and it's happy with that. And now it's saying, hey, I can't uh, find a device connected. You know, I, I can't go out and auto detect what PIC processor you've got uh, you know, out there to program. So I'm going to take the PIC Kit 3 now and that programming cable. And I'm going to hook it up to my little proto board. We've done this, so we've not got the cable here connected up from pin 1 to pin 1. And the next step we need to do here is use the PIC Kit 3 itself to provide power to that proto board. And to do that, you need to go into the advanced mode here. Advanced mode, for whatever reason, requires a password, but it tells you what the password is right here. So I'm going to type in microchip. And I'm going to log in. And the first thing it does is full scale the application. 
So let me get it drugged down here where you can actually see the application. Why that goes to full screen is beyond me, but it does it every time I go into uh, the advanced mode. Let me get it sized back to the screen here. In the advanced mode, uh, per let's just see these options here and we can go to power this option and we can tell it to power the target from this is going to tell it to power the target device we want to program from the pit kit 3 itself if we come back to operate and just go ahead and disconnect and reconnect the pit kit 3 it's going through it, its stuff here it said hey I'm happy with the firmware Uh, and it told us right here that it actually detected the PIC on the, on the proto board and it's ready to program it. We can do a blank check of that PIC and it tells us the device is not blank and that's because I've actually programmed something else in here. So let's go ahead and erase the device. And it's erasing successful and now it should check out as blank. And it does. And let's go ahead and program something into it. In this case, this is the uh, Geoffs VT100 terminal emulator, which is what this whole project has been about. I want to program that file into the PIC. So we've loaded it. We can click on Program here. The PIC Kit 3 is not the fastest way to program a, a PIC32 MX device, but it works. This is programming away here, and it says, Yes, I've programmed it. We can come in here and verify. And it believes the device is programmed. I have plugged one of these uh, programmed devices into one of Geoff's VT100 terminal emulators, and it appears to work, so I'm satisfied this is programming correctly. And there it is, verified. So to kind of recap here quick, uh, we've really got our little circuit of how we're, how we're going to hook the device up on the proto board to program it. The layout I used, uh, you know, you could screen grab this if you wanted and follow along. The fact that you need to hold down the black button here when you plug in the USB to the PIC Kit 3 to wake it up in MP Lab mode so the uh, MP Lab IPE software will see it. And then just be sure to get pin 1 from the uh, PIC Kit 3 over to pin 1 here on the programming header. and. You should be good to go. So, pretty happy with this. As soon as I close this software, it'll log me out of advanced mode. Then I have to log back in and, and turn the power on again on to program in the future. But that's kind of a small price to play to, or pay to actually have this working. Like I said, I've been trying to program this PIC32 MX250 for two weeks. Tons of Google searches, looking at various. Uh, configurations for programming and external components required and lots of advice and lots of people struggling and lots of people with success but I never found anything that actually said end-to-end -end, here's the steps I did to get it to go uh, hopefully this will help somebody out uh, let me know in the comments if you found this useful and I think with that we'll wrap this up and we'll talk soon Thank <laughs> you.